Hello everyone. Welcome to David Griffiths Electrodynamics. Um, we are continuing on. I got some free time. Um, I'm in graduate school right now, part time, and I work a full time job. So free time has been uh, not easy to find. Um, I also have a girlfriend and just you know life to live. So um, it has been a while since I've made a video, but. You know, Christmas break is coming up, the, the holidays are coming up, and graduate school is starting to wind down a bit. And so I figured, you know, I'd use some of this free time that I have to maybe start uploading some more videos for my David Griffiths series. So this is problem 3.1. And re real quick, I'll just read out the, uh, the problem statement. So it says to find the average potential over a spherical surface of radius r due to a point charge q located inside the sphere um, and, and so in this case the distance z is going to be less than the radius of the sphere so d the distance z is the distance from the origin to the charge and it says that we want to show that in general the average potential um, just in general over all the space um, or really yeah just the average potential is the potential um, at the, uh, due to a charge at the center of the sphere, um, and this is shown uh, from example 3.1.4, which I've kind of briefly written here on the side, um, plus the charge enclosed over 4 pi epsilon uh, r. So basically, it wants us to show that the, take, that the um, average potential um, due to some charge configuration um, is a sum of these two different uh, terms here. And so the first term comes from example 3.1.4 in the book. So in this case, the charge Q is located uh, a distance Z above the sphere. The sphere has a radius R, there's this angle theta, and the, the, uh, the vector from the charge to the, um, the surface of the sphere is um, curly R. And so the potential due to this charge at the surface is just 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q over curly R. That's simple enough. However, curly R can be written as, uh, you can write it as, you know, well, R squared is, using the law of cosines, is uh, capital R squared plus Z squared minus 2RZ cosine of theta. That's just a simple application of the law of cosines. And then take the square root of that to get curly R. And so it goes through, you can look in the book, it goes through and shows you that the average potential um, is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times Q over Z, which this potential is the exact same thing as if you had that charge Q located at the origin here. Um, and yeah, so the potential, due, the potential due to this charge outside of the sphere is the same as if this charge was... Uh, inside of the sphere at the, at the origin. And this spherical surface here is supposed to be centered at the origin um, with a radius r. So now moving to our problem, uh, we have the same exact setup where we have the spherical surface of radius capital R and we have a charge Q, a distance z on the z-axis. However, it's inside the sphere. So this, the distance z is less than the radius of the sphere. So the potential at the surface of the sphere would just be 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q over uh, curly R, where curly R again is just using log cosines, the square root of Z squared plus R squared minus 2RZ cosine of theta. And I wrote here where Z is less than capital R. So the average potential uh, can be written um, real quick. The average potential over the, a sphere would just be uh, 1 over 4 pi r squared, so dividing by the surface area of the sphere and integrating over the sphere uh, the potential uh, let me just make sure I get this right and dA. So that's the average potential over uh, this sort of spherical surface and so using that equation I write the average potential using um, this curly r here and um, the potential due to our charge. So we have the Q over four pi epsilon naught, and then the one over four pi r squared from the equation. 
then we integrate over the sphere and the potential V is due to our charge is this um, is just uh, the, what's left in the integral is the one over the curly R so that's Z squared plus R squared minus 2RZ cosine theta to the power of negative one half here and then I have my dA term here in uh, spherical coordinates so I have a R squared sine of theta d theta d phi that's just dA here in the equation in spherical coordinates and the V here is the Q over 4 pi epsilon naught plus this term here so doing this integral the d phi term there's nothing there's no phi dependence on this integral so the integral of d phi from 0 to 2 pi is just 2 pi so I pull out the 2 pi there that's just a I did that integral just in my head and I still have all the constant terms outside and so my integral just becomes this where this can be a simple u substitution integral so we let u equal this term here right and if we take the derivative of u with respect to theta then we just get 2rz times sine of theta because the derivative of cosine with respect to theta is negative sine so that cancels out that minus sign there we get 2rz sine of theta and moving on I think I actually forgot did I forget some terms out here I might have um, anyways let's just see how this goes on <laughs> so moving on so using that u substitution our integral becomes we have the q over 4 pi epsilon naught we have the 2 pi and I bring out the um, let's see I bring out the r squared from the da term I just bring that out um, and that's all gonna and I have the 4 pi r squared on the bottom and a lot of that just cancels out you have a 2 on the bottom and I forgot the 2 r z here uh, however that seems to just not matter um, let me just double check real quick <laughs> this because all that just cancel out um, I guess it did let me just double check so if I had the 2RZ there the 2RZ would come from here so du is the sine of theta d theta so if I had a 2RZ here let me just double check um, that would put uh, when you do this integral so the integral of 1 over mu d mu is just it's 2 times the square root of mu so 1 over the square root of mu d mu is 2 times the square root of mu when you do that integral because that's mu to the negative 1 half um, and so you add 1 and divide by a half um, so you get the positive one half, which is a which is a normal square root, and then divide by a half. That's a multiplication by two. So after canceling my uh, terms here, um, and I guess I still have a two R Z here. Uh, so I guess I would cancel that and that. I'm just trying to figure out what's what's going on here because uh, I forgot some of those constants. But the bounds of the integral now run from z squared plus r squared minus 2rz to z squared plus r squared plus 2rz so that comes from here if you look at our substitution it, it, originally our bounds were going to be from z, theta goes from 0 to pi however now that we change from theta to mu when theta is 0 mu becomes z squared plus r squared minus 2rz and when theta is pi it just flips the sign and becomes z squared plus r squared plus 2rz so that's how I got the new bounds there and so after plugging in the bounds, we get, uh, let's see, let me just figure out what I'm doing here. That 2 multiplies by that 4, that's the 8 there. Um, that 2 is that 2. And then um, we have the 4, I think, here, because that that 2 and that 2 would be the 4 and so after I plug in the bounds that's what we have and then from here you can it the the terms inside of these two square roots are just typical factors like these are easy very easy to factor so this can be factored as just z squared plus r squared and this one can be factored as um, it actually be r squared minus z squared because 
z uh, z is less than r in this case if if z was greater than r then it would be z squared minus r squared and so since we have z like for this case we have z squared plus r we have, or sorry it's z plus r whole squared not z squared plus r squared it's z plus r whole squared in this case it's uh, r minus z whole squared so we have z plus r whole squared in the square root that just becomes z plus r and we have r minus z whole squared in the square root that becomes r minus z so that's how we got those two things we just factored those and applied the square root and i think there should be a four there huh i'm just trying to figure out what the heck's going on here with my uh, constant terms so i think i'm not sure exactly uh, what's going on here? Because I think it should just be, um, you know what? I think actually the 2RZ, um, yeah, just forget this for now. I think I just messed up my constants somewhere. However, we come up with the right answer in the end. Uh, so forget the constants for now, basically, the 2RZ that I added. Um, but as you can see here, this is Z plus R minus R, so the R minus R is gone. And then minus minus Z, so that's 2Z. And then, so that would cancel. I think the 2RZ was supposed to be on the bottom somehow. And so that would have canceled the 2Z. And then we would just have capital R on the bottom left. So anyways, after you did all this, you should come out with Q over four pi epsilon naught capital R uh, just on the bottom there. And so that's just saying, yeah, so that's, so this is the potential um, due to the charge inside of the sphere. Uh, th this is the average potential over the spherical surface due to the charge inside of the sphere, spherical surface. Um, so the total average potential is you would take all the charges out, you know, you would you take the average potential due to all charges outside of the sphere, plus the average potential due to all the charges inside the sphere would be the average potential. And if we had more than one charge inside of the sphere, instead of this being just Q, we could replace that with, you know, Q enclosed, the total charge enclosed in the sphere. So we take that term, and so the average potential, this is what we wanted to show, is is the charge due to the charges outside of the sphere, which is called V center in the book, which that comes from the example 3.1.4, plus what we found in our problem is the Q enclosed over four pi epsilon naught capital R. So that's what we wanted to show. That in general, this is the, the average potential over the spherical surface. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Yes, there's a little bit of mistakes here with the constants. Um, not too big, big of a deal. Um, let me know if you work that out, work that out yourself. But um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.